Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and I am here today with the very first challenge in my Shop Your Stash September challenge series. I hope you'll stick around, find out what the first challenge is, see what I'm going to create, and find out how you can play along. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Last week, I had a video introduction for my Shop Your Stash September challenge, and if you haven't seen that video yet, I do have it linked in the description box below and as an end card at the end of this video. What I want to do this month is challenge myself not to spend money on any crafty items and shop my stash, use what I have, and get creative. I thought it might be fun to challenge you to join me as well. And I am back today with challenge number one, which is, are you kidding me? Yes, we probably all have them. Paper kits, whether it's a monthly card kit you get, a monthly scrapbooking kit. For me today, I will just be using a paper crafting kit that I got at Hobby Lobby. It could also just be a collection that you bought lots of different items in it and you have yet to use it. Whatever you come up with for your kit, that is okay. I just want you to use what you have. In the introduction video, I did give the basics of the challenge, but later on in this video, when I am in the middle of my process, I will give you information on how you can play along with challenge one and enter a photo of your creation to be shared in my recap video, which will be next month. So I hope that you will consider playing along. You will have, gee, we're going to go until October 10th. So you have over a month to play. So I hope that you'll consider joining me for one challenge or two challenge or all of them. For my projects today, I chose this family paper crafting kit. Like I said, I got it Hobby Lobby. It comes with letter stickers, some little sentiment stickers with different sayings, some die cut large stickers, and then of course pattern paper. I will let you know more about what products and tools I use as I add them in the video, but if I ever leave you with any questions, as always, you can leave those in the comment section below. Let's get crafty! Before I get started on the process, I do have a channel member shout out. I would like to say thank you and welcome to Paper Trimmer Level Membership to Marcy Lit. Thank you so much, Marcy, for your support. Thank you to all of my channel members who continue to support me. And if you're ever interested in the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. This collection kit came with five different patterns, two of each sheet, and I decided to pull out the floral and wood grain because I love to use those together, so I'll use them at a different time. And for my final cards, because I need three for the sheet load of cards, I chose the three that you see remaining on screen. I have one that's kind of busier with lots of colors, and then the other two have fewer colors and even a little gold foiling. For my layout today, I will be using the April 2020 sheet load of cards and following those cutting guides. Now I won't really talk a lot about the specifics of sizes, but I will have the video where you can find out how to download the April 2020 sheet load of cards linked in that description box below. I got started by cutting each of the three pattern papers per the instructions. I decided instead of using two different colors for the matting on the smaller pieces that I would pull in some scraps of gold foil paper from my stash and I just cut until I had six of the right size pieces. While I work on adding those mats to the pattern paper pieces, I thought it would be a great time to take a pause and tell you how you can enter challenge number one in my Shop Your Stash September challenge series. 
I would love you to join me this month in these challenges and create with what you have. And you can do this in three simple steps, which I will explain now. The first thing that you'll do is create a new project following today's challenge using only items from your stash. Then you're going to upload a photo of that project using the form linked in the description box below. And finally, you can sit back and enjoy the recap video in October. I do ask that you create a separate project for each challenge and please even if you're super inspired by a single challenge and create more than one project, please just choose your favorite to upload. When you photograph your project, rectangle landscape photos are the best and make sure to send them at a nice quality. And just a heads up that even though my watermark will not be on your photo, I will not have time to add your name or YouTube username. So if you would like to do that, please do that ahead of time. And here in just a second, I'll show you a quick way that you can do that. Once your project photo is ready for uploading, you will need to use the specific form for the challenge. Each challenge will have a new form linked, so make sure when you're uploading that the challenge number or name at the top of the form matches the challenge that you're submitting for. If you do want to add your name to your photo, it doesn't have to be anything fancy or require any special software. Most mobile devices and laptops or computers will allow you to open a photo and add a text box to it. Then you would just save this and upload it to the form. Speaking of the form, an example is up on screen now and you will want to make sure that you fill out each individual section. You will enter your YouTube username, your first name, your email address and the email address is only if I would need to contact you with a question and I will not be retaining these after this month's challenge. You will then let me know how you followed the challenge. In this example, it would be what kit you used. Then I need you to agree to let me use the photo in the October video. And finally, you're going to upload the photo from your computer and submit it. You will want to make sure that you see this screen that says you have submitted it before closing out your window. All photos will be due by midnight central time on October 10th. I am looking forward to seeing what you create this month and hope that you'll join me. Once the matting was finished, I mixed and matched the patterns and the pieces until I had the items for each of the six cards put together. Then I brought in the six top fold card bases that I cut and folded off screen and started adhering each of the pattern paper pieces. Once again, if you're interested in this sheet load of cards, the debut video is linked in that description box below. For the sentiments on today's cards, I chose three different ones from this There She Goes stamp set, and I stamped those in in the navy ink from Gina K Designs. I just used some scraps of white cardstock for this, and then after every two stamps, I cleaned off the stamp and replaced it with the next sentiment until they were all done and then I took those off camera and I die cut them with a stitched circle die. While I work on adding the foam tape to the back of the sentiments and getting these placed on the cards, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with a QOTV or question of the video. Today's question was submitted by my sister and channel member Crafty Days and she would like to know, what is the least expensive tool that you use most often? We would love for you to add your answer in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV so that we know you've answered it and would like us to see it. I thought this was a great question to be in the kickoff of the Shop Your Stash series because I think many times we always think we need the latest and greatest tools and supplies, but sometimes it's those cheap 
old trusty items we have that we reach for the most. I did have to stop and think about my answer for a while because you know I use my ATG a lot and I use my paper trimmer a lot, but honestly those things are a little bit pricey. But something that I use on probably every project and I use it for lots of different things is my little precision scissors that you just saw me cut the foam tape with and here in a minute you'll see I also use them for gem placement. They're just a versatile tool for me and they were probably around $10 when I bought them. To add a little bit more sparkle to these cards, but not a whole lot of bulk, I brought in my glitter dots from Elizabeth Craft Designs. These are just little clear sparkly stickers that have a gold rim, and on this one sheet there are probably five or six different sizes. This is one of my favorite ways to add sparkle, but again it's nice and flat for mailing. I place between three and five on each card and here in just a little bit I'll show you all of the cards and you can see how they differed. Off screen I did go ahead and use up some of the pattern paper scraps and I decorated the inside of each card. And here's a look at the finished six cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I used that collection kit to create these six cards today. I can't wait to start seeing your creations using a kit. If you did enjoy today's video, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above and if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.